What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of The Real Black China. This is season one, episode 10, No Hard Feelings. Period, Pooh. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever your auntie I have uh, uploaded new content. I want to remind you guys to shop Andrea's clothing. I will leave the link down in my description box below. Make sure to use coupon code AUNTIMO fitting and you will get 15% off your purchase. And I want to remind you guys to go to SoundCloud right now. You hear that song playing in the background? You hear it? Hey, hey, hey. That's Cole Beasy. That's my baby cousin. Go to SoundCloud right now. Check it out. You're welcome. Okay. Um, first, listen, I know I'm late with this review. I'm getting later and later with this real black China review. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all. That's because I don't know if I like this show no more. And you listen, I was so excited when this show came out because I was a fan of Black China. I'm thinking, if nothing else, she's going to give you fashions. You're going to see the hair, the lace snatched to capacity. You're going to see all of that, right? But I didn't think that I was going to get the real Black China in, at the real Black China. Like, is this the real Black China? Because I don't, I don't know if I like this Black China no more. You know what I'm saying? I would give y'all the review fresh up off the press on the Sunday night. Now you get it on Monday night. Damn near to Tuesday. I'm sorry, y'all, but um, let's just say if it's the second season, I'm not gonna be reviewing the shit, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this episode tonight, y'all, you know what I'm saying? We just gonna go ahead. What is the hell is on my TV? Now making this money is a habit. And you ain't taking Oh shit. Cuz I was always taught by any man. Cha. I go say okay. Uh hopefully y'all are ready for the review cuz I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up and do it. All right y'all. So, first and foremost, Auntie sipping on some mango strawberry moscato. Mm -hmm. Little Arba Miss in my life, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my mama. I miss you, girl. Arba Miss was my mama's favorite drink. And I'm doing this for you tonight, mama girl. Okay, so this damn black china. Okay, so she in her kitchen, right? She in there with Jamal, some guy named Jay, and some other guy named Larry. Jay, I want to say he was on RuPaul's Drag Race years and years ago. If he was an old school head, I don't know what his name was, but I think he was on there. But he's he looks exactly, the, I mean, exactly the same. Now, before I get into this, if you don't know already, Ashton has his own YouTube um, channel. Ashton Levi, I believe is what it is. Now, this morning, he put out his own review because he does a review after each episode that comes out as well. And so he did his own review about the episode because, of course, it was starting off talking about him. Now, put that out there, okay, if you want to get into more details. Now, they're all sitting in the kitchen chilling or whatever, right? So Jay asked China, like, hey, can we tell Ashton to go get us something to eat? Don't tell him it's from me, though. Tell him it's from you because, you know, if it's for me, he's going to be like, hell no, go get your own goddamn food. But China's like, okay, well, I'm glad that I got y'all in here because I've been kind of want to let y'all know, but um, Ashton is no longer working with me. Now, Jay said he wasn't really surprised by that. He was like, I'm surprised that he's gone before Jamal is gone. Now... In this scene, China looked like she was a little bit annoyed with Jamal. And I'll get on that in just a minute. But China is very vague in her reasoning as for why Ashton is not with her anymore. Now, she said there's no hard feelings, that she doesn't have anything negative to say about him, that sometimes people just don't work out. Now, Ashton was very vague in his response as well in the video that he let out this morning saying the same thing. He did say, though, and I caught that T, baby. He said she didn't say anything bad about me, so I'm not going to say anything bad about her. Um, it just didn't work out. I'm no longer working with her no more. That was basically the end of it. But he did say, if you've watched these episodes of The Real Black China, you see for yourself how she is, and you would see why any person would no longer want to work for her anymore. He said 
says he didn't get fired. She didn't say if she fired him or not. She didn't say he did get fired. She didn't say he didn't get fired. She just said that he's not working there with her anymore. They asked like why, what happened. She said something like he started off as a fan and he went from a fan to being her assistant. That she moved him out there. He was living in her guest house. And basically, she was saying that she doesn't consider herself to be a hard person to work for. All she asks is that you take pictures and basically be at her every beck and call. Which, the episodes that I've been watching, that's exactly what he was doing. But again, nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes. She just basically says like that. Like, I guess he just... He just wasn't up to par, is what she was saying. Like, he just wasn't there. He just didn't work out for her. whoop de whoop It is what it is. So just reading in between the lines, like I said, she was very vague. He was even vaguer. Um, I'm guessing they probably got into it some kind of way because the way she talked down to her staff, bitch, I'm surprised you got anybody working for you. No, ma'am. Uh-uh. Ooh, child, it wouldn't be me. No, ma'am, because the minute she got out of the I'd have to snatch her ass up so damn quick. Jamal then asked her how did the counseling go with her and her mom and Dr. Suri. Now, again, she just seemed annoyed and irritated with Jamal. This whole scene. Like, everything that he said, she was kind of snapping back at him. Everything that he said, she was kind of quick to kind of like, just kind of like debate with him. I, I mean... And then her, him bringing up how the counseling went, you can see her getting annoyed again. And then one of them asked, no, it was Jamal that asked. He was like, so talking with Miss Tony or Mama T, whatever he calls her, I know that she seems to think that there are certain influences around you. Do you think that, you know, there's people around you that's preventing y'all from having a relationship? She shut down after that. Shut down. She looked over at this the other guy named, uh, I think his name was Larry. This fool had on a mask, like a silk SARS mask. What is that supposed to do? Are you a damn stick-up kid? Did you just come from robbing a bank? Or did you come from a Hollywood hospital? And everybody there got some high-class walking Ebola and y'all got to have on silk Gucci face. Man, I didn't get that. What was the point of that? That that just look, you boy, you look dumb. If you didn't just get out of surgery, or you was on your way to damn surgery, or you was on your way to Hong Kong around the world, what is you got this SARS mask on like this, and you just up there talking, yeah, so how did the counseling go? What is wrong with you? So once they brought up treasure, she got pissed off because Jamal was alluding to that. He was like, do you think it's somebody around you? Whoop the whoop. SARS mask, dude. He asked, so, so um, how's treasure? How's everything with treasure? You, I mean, you know he was talking because his head was moving, but you didn't see his damn mouth moving because the damn silk SARS mask. This just, just looked dumb. If I got a picture, I'm going to put the picture up somewhere up in here. Run it up, run it up, run it up. So after they bring up treasure, China gets pissed off. She tells him to cut the camera like no dead ass cut the camera. And they cut the camera and they go to the next scene. Now she did say in her green screen that her and treasure were not on the best terms right now. They hadn't spoken in a few days. Did again didn't say for what. Now back up one minute. I think the reason why China didn't want to say anything about Ashton is because Ashton being her personal assistant, he knows the good, the bad, and the ugly of the real black China. And so if she would have said something bad against him, he could come back on that ass. Cause I know he knows all kind of tea on her goddamn ass. And she'd be a damn fool if she was to say something crooked about his ass. I know if I was your girl, look, don't make me play my card with your crazy ass. China gets a visit from Miss Mary. Miss Mary is, I guess, like, um, she's kind of like an old school mentor that gives her, you know, good advice, good sound mama advice. She's an old, she's an old gospel praying woman. Anything and everything can be fixed by God. You die of cancer, God gonna fix it. You got a flat tire, God gonna fix it. Your hair falling out, God gonna fix it. No matter what's going on, God gonna fix it. She one of them old school praying mamas, right? So she comes to visit China, and basically, you know, 
China's telling her, you know, how she's got these different relationships and things that's going on in the media. How she, you know, is going to counsel with her mom. How certain relationships, personal relationships that she has are coming to an end and how she's stressed out over that. I mean, this scene, I mean, it was nice to see China have somebody real in her life for that moment to give her some good sound advice and and not be fake if I don't feel like Miss Mary was fake or phony about nothing that she was saying to her I don't think China was ready for all that that gospel that Miss Mary was bringing because baby Miss Miss, uh, Miss Mary came in there covered in the army uh, um, of the Lord okay she came up in there with her spiritual Bible ready to beat her ass over the head with it not saying nothing against that but I don't think China was ready to receive all of that because she daggone show sure wasn't gonna take none of that and and use any of that into her everyday life now she could surprise the hell out of us but if it's anything like oh hell next week is when she get into it with jamal she ain't learned nothing she ain't learned a doggone thing now miss mary invites her to church china says she don't want to go to her church but she wants to go visit Grace Jones' brother. Y'all know Grace Jones. The one that was in Boomerang. <laughs> the one that ain't got no panties and had dinner with Marcus. She want to go to her brother church. <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, hey, as long as they got a little bit of Jesus up in there, it don't even matter. But anywho, now Miss Mary was like, I'm fine with that. You know, as long as we get to get in there, we get to get a word. That's all that matters to me. Now you can tell Miss Mary was a little thrown off like, um, excuse me, sister, you don't want to go to Greater Over Thine Mule Baptist Zion Missionary Church of Thy Lord and Savior, my church, but you want to go to Mr. Grace Jones's church? Okay, you know, okay, it is what it is. I see that in Miss Mary. <laughs> Like you little helpful, uh, you know. Let me stop. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. God. China busy worried about what outfit she gonna wear to church. She like, oh, I gotta fix my hair. I gotta give me an outfit. Miss Mary was like, for church. Girl, I go up in there in a good pair of knickerbockers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop, I'm stupid. All right, y'all. So this is the tea that everybody's been seeing online. Okay, now, Treasure comes over to the house. Now, before they actually talk, China says in her green screen that, Ch that Treasure has been blowing up her phone back to back. She ain't been answering the phone for her. Strike one. Why you ain't answering the phone for the girl when you see the girl she clearly trying to call you? So, she says, when they finally do talk, Treasure like, okay, so, like, like what's going on? China's like, well, you let me know. Like, you call a producer. You didn't call me. Um, Treasure's like, yeah, because I've been trying to call you. You have not been answering your phone. So, I figure, how else can I get in contact with you? China's like, well, because I didn't know when our filming schedule was. Treasure's like, but right, I'm trying to talk to you before we film because we homegirls. And so if me and you got beef, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is before we film. China, once again, goes back to, well, I didn't know what the filming schedule was, so and I don't have to answer your phone calls. Like, she started off contradicting. What do you mean? What do you mean? Y'all, this whole scene was stupid to me, and it hurt my feelings. I'm gonna tell you why I hurt my feelings. If they, well, not personally, like, uh, but I'm just saying, like, from sister to sister, if that's supposed to be your home girl, to see y'all two go at it like that on national TV in front of everybody, if y'all was having an issue, but then again, all of this shit I blame on China. If you had an issue with Treasure, you could have called her up. You could have answered the damn 50, 1100 million phone calls you said she was sending you. You could have answered her text message. You could have reached out to her Instagram, any of that. But you didn't do that. You want to wait until you got in front of the cameras to then front this girl, call her out, saying that you didn't want to answer the phone from her. You don't have to answer her phone calls. You don't have to post her business. Like, I really didn't get what the issue was with them, but it went from you want to answer my phone calls, I don't have to answer your phone calls, to I asked you to post my business and you posted my business plenty of times and I posted your business plenty of times, trying to say I don't want to post them pussy. <laughs> 
<laughs> she wrong for that. Cause you know Treasure uh, sells them yoni eggs. And she said, I didn't want to post no coochie eggs. <laughs> That's messed up. That's supposed to be your homegirl. It don't matter if she was selling butt eggs. That's your homegirl. She asked you to post it on the page. You post it on your page. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. It's supposed to be, I'm just saying. That's supposed to be your homegirl. That's all I'm saying. Then China got into, I gave, I've given you 500 on 5,000, 10,000, thousands on top of thousands of dollars. Now, time out right there. If that was really your homegirl, why the hell is you sitting up here keeping tabs on how much money that you gave her to throw back up in her face the minute y'all got into it? I ain't like that, y'all. I did not like that. I didn't like that. And you know what? I don't like that I'm going off like this in this review like this. You know what I'm saying? That's another reason why I don't know if I want to review it, if it's the next season to it. Just because look at the kind of evil energy I'm giving. I don't like this. It's like blowing my buzz with my wine and shit. You know what I'm saying? But it just, it got me there. It really got me there. And I, I, I just didn't like, like I said, it was just them going back and forth to basically everything that we've been seeing online. Where she calls, China calls Treasure a bum. And Treasure says you tried to embezzle money, which flipped the script on Treasure. Now... Just because you mad at her, you can't throw up shit in her face either. It goes both ways. You didn't have to do that to that girl neither, whether she was really trying to embezzle money or not. You a homegirl. Cold one. Bitch, you keep secrets. On period, pool, on life, mama. You keep secrets. That's just what it is. And so she was wrong in that instance, but then throw it up in her face. Well, you had me do this because you wanted me to go into the bank and withdraw some money to do this and do that. Girl, you didn't even have to go there with it. You did not even have to go there with it. So it just went from them arguing back and forth to then trying to throw it out with get out of my mansion, F you in your house. No, F you in your house. I mean, it was dumb. It was dumb. It was heartbreaking to see two friends relationship demise on national TV like that. But, you know, y'all signed up for the bullshit, so I'm going to sip my mango, strawberry, Moscato and watch it. You know what I'm saying? But, y'all, the episode pretty much ended back and forth with, like I said, with them going back and forth with this old dumb stuff, and it was just getting on my nerves. It was. It really was. Next week is when she's supposed to be, um, I guess, getting into it with Jamal next. She finna kick Jamal out. Y'all. And then you hear Tonio supposed to have her own show now. Y'all, y'all already know that's gonna be a hot ass goddamn mess. Now I'm gonna have to watch the first episode to see if I'm gonna review that old book. Cause y'all already, girl, y'all already know that's gonna be a hot ass mess with Tonio and, 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 and her own show so she can do what she wanna do. Oh, y'all already know she she gonna she, she gonna act a plum damn donkey but anywho that was the review if i missed anything y'all please comment let me know now okay please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and auntie mo will see y'all in the next video peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i have